Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to be looking for, towards, um, or at least talking about a planet that is still hypothetical, Planet 9 or Planet X, the next planet that is yet to be discovered in our solar system, if it exists. Before we get into that, I have made a slight adjustment to the format of my recording. You should be able to see the time and date along the bottom of the screen a little bit more clearly. It's the easiest way for me to show exactly when and at what date I am looking at the sky. So hopefully that will make uh, when exactly I'm looking at the sky a little bit more clear in future videos. If you pause the video and take a look down at the bottom, hopefully part of the time and date will no longer be obscured. I decided to take a look at the sky for Monday yesterday just because of the... Uh, sort of nice alliteration with the digits here. But we are going to be looking far out into space and looking for something that we don't actually know if it exists. We are looking for Planet Nine or Planet X. When Planet X was first hypothesized as a massive planet out beyond Neptune, Planet X would have been the ninth planet discovered. Even though X is the Roman numeral for 10, or at least the symbol that we see as a capital X is also used for the Roman numeral 10. Uh, numerals and graphemes and all of that are not something I'm going to get into. Because we're looking at incredibly distant planets, of course, we can't see Uranus or Neptune from the city, and we can barely see Uranus with the naked eye from the countryside, but we will push out to the countryside here because we are looking at something so distant we definitely have no hope of seeing it from the city and no hope of seeing it with the naked eye. Unfortunately, there is no way that this planet is big enough to be visible to the naked eye. It would have to be incredibly large, way bigger than the ice giants Uranus and Neptune for it to be visible from a greater distance. Uh, so, of course, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, they're all visible to the naked eye. So the planets that are further from the sun than us, that are big enough and close enough, we've known about them since at least the ancient Greeks, and most likely even before, uh, at least these were written about since ancient Greek times. So we've got Jupiter and Saturn there, and here we have Uranus. I have mentioned in the past that Uranus may be visible to the naked eye, as long as you know where to look, but because of its incredible distance and its incredibly long orbit, uh, you can see there it takes a uh, 84 years, uh, according to this, for one uh, sidereal period, so about 84 years to get around the sun once. Uranus takes so long to orbit the sun that it was never discovered in ancient times. Saturn, uh, of course, further from the sun than Jupiter, only takes about 29, 20 odd years to get around the sun. So Uranus is significantly further and significantly slower moving. And it is that slow movement that made it uh, so difficult to ascertain that Uranus was a planet, at least with the naked eye. Once we take a closer look at Uranus and we can compare it to the background stars, uh, that's the light of the moon. So we can see that Uranus and the moon are going to be very close together in the sky on the 16th of November this year. But once we're magnified, we can see that Uranus is moving different to the stars. It is progressing or walking across the sky. It is a planet. And we can do the same for Neptune, which uh, is out here somewhere. I know Neptune is out here somewhere because it was pretty close to Saturn the last time we took a look. And Neptune takes even longer to get around the sun. So we can see Neptune down here over 100 years, 164, 160 odd years to get around the sun. So Neptune's incredibly slow orbit means it takes even longer for us to notice that it is moving across the sky. We have to zoom in even closer and we can see that moving through days at a time here, its movement still appears to be pretty slight. One of the reasons why Neptune was searched for was because of peculiarities in Uranus's orbit, and Neptune's orbit showed some peculiarities as well. Uh, Percival Lowell was an astronomer, or at least a rich person with an interest in astronomy. Uh, the Lowell Observatory is named after them. Percival Lowell did believe that the uh, canyons that we see on Mars were canals created by aliens, but this was a very long time ago, and of course, now we know that's in the realm of science fiction, but 
science fiction and science fact, you know, they sometimes do blur together. If you uh, try and write sci-fi far enough in the future, you might eventually run across something uh, that turns out to be science fact uh, eventually. Uh, you know, communicators in, in, in Star Trek and such and how they led to the development or inspired the development of the mobile phones that are so ubiquitous today. Percival Lowell made a mistake. He thought that there was canal building aliens on Mars. And once once he was ridiculed, once everybody said that was a pretty stupid idea, of course he wanted to do something to fix it. And there was good mathematical evidence that Neptune was not the last planet in the solar system. So people started looking, they started searching for another planet. And it took a very long time, but Pluto was eventually found. So Pluto is a dwarf planet, as we understand uh, dwarf planets today. I think it might not be up. Oh, okay, we can. Pluto is above the horizon before sunset. Um, in another couple of weeks, it, it won't be. Pluto will be too close to the sun for us to observe. But it is apparently still above the horizon, so that's nice. We can take a closer look at Pluto here. Pluto was discovered because of the search for planet X. Pluto, the ninth planet, uh, it was at least considered the ninth planet. Planet X was used as a placeholder because it was unknown. Uh, for example, in um, algebra, if you're solving for X, X is a variable, it's unknown. And Planet X was an unknown planet that could potentially solve the um, mathematical equation uh, explaining Neptune's strange orbit. It was never meant to be Planet 10. But when Pluto was discovered, and Pluto was named the ninth planet, but Pluto's tiny, it's way too small to have any kind of effect on Neptune's orbit, so the large planet, the massive planet that's big enough to affect Neptune's orbit, it was still considered unknown. And of course, after Pluto, it would have been the tenth planet, so planet X, the Roman numeral X for ten, it got conflated, it all got mixed up and mixed together. We are now back to calling it Planet Nine. Pluto has been reclassified as a dwarf planet, not a major planet. I am sticking with the definition that dwarf planets are their own thing, major planets are their own thing, and that planets covers major planets and dwarf planets. Unfortunately, the language just isn't super clear, and many people count dwarf planets as planets, and all planets are planets. I disagree with that definition because of the confusion that can come from minor planets and minor solar system bodies. Then again, I'm not in charge. Nobody has to listen to what I say. The International Astronomical Union is the one who decides all of these things. So if we are looking for another planet that can explain Neptune's orbit, well, when people started discovering all of these small objects, they started looking at their orbits. We will very briefly go to the solar system observer, but it's not something that I am going to be able to show just by looking at the orbits of these distant bodies, because it's strictly their orbits that is the issue. It's their behavior and location along these orbits. Um, accidental or coincidental clustering of Kuiper Belt and Oort cloud objects is one proposed explanation that doesn't require, where are we? Uh, there we go. Uh, one potential explanation that doesn't require the hypothetical other planets. So I will bring up the orbits so we can see the deep sky, not deep sky objects, um, the deep solar system objects, uh, Sednoids and Plutinos and Cubuenos and all of these other things, they do orbit around the sun. And they do seem to behave in a slightly strange way way uh not only for the selected ones show all of them um so they do seem to behave in a slightly strange way these very distant objects so we'll zoom out here here we go so we can see there are a lot of these strange orbits some of them are highly inclined some of them are highly elliptical we can see that this orbit here doesn't even seem to fully line up so presumably that's a uh, Hyperbol uh, hyperbolic uh, orbit that's carrying something out of the solar system. But we can see that, you know, in there is our asteroid belt and our inner solar system. We've got some of our outer objects here. And then we've got this big mess of stuff, these distant objects. They're orbiting the sun in a way that's not totally understandable. Our current understanding of the solar system and the currently accepted models of physics based on general and special relativity don't explain it. They simply do not explain it. There is a gap in our knowledge. There is something that we do not fully understand 
about how the small objects at the edge of our solar system behave. One potential explanation is that there is a bigger planet, an ice giant, outside these objects that we have yet to discover, whose gravity is influencing their orbit. That's a perfectly fine explanation. We haven't found that planet yet. And the longer it goes without us finding that planet, the less likely it is to exist. If it is a massive planet, there's a good chance that we would have found it already. But we don't know everything about space. We could just be looking in the wrong way. It could be highly inclined. It could be very difficult to spot. There are other theories which are, in my opinion, a little bit more far-fetched, uh, that there is a primordial black hole, that there is a small black hole out here, uh, something that's, you know, very, very small and not interacting with a lot of material, so not generating a big event horizon, which would produce light. A small black hole that's not sucking anything in wouldn't really be noticeable other than its gravitational effect on the other bodies in the solar system. Something else that's only noticeable through its gravitational effect is the hypothetical uh, dark matter and dark energy. Because dark matter and dark energy are not yet fully confirmed, uh, we don't really know exactly what they are. They're just a potentially good explanation of how galaxies work, because the way that galaxies move and rotate, we still don't fully understand why they do it the way they do it. Our current understanding of physics fails to accurately predict what we see in the case of these massive galaxies and in the case of the uh, small solar system bodies out at the edge of the solar system. We do need to keep coming up with theories and potential explanations explaining why our current understanding of physics just isn't good enough. And it's not. Our current understanding of physics is great uh, for launching rockets into space and doing lots of other amazing things, but we still can't exactly explain the behavior of galaxies or the small objects at the edge of our solar system. Maybe it's dark matter or dark energy. Maybe there's a little black hole orbiting around the solar system. Maybe it's just a coincidence. We still don't know for sure, but we're still looking. We're getting closer. We keep making uh, new discoveries, new hypotheses, getting closer and closer to an accurate prediction of what we see in the sky. Physics is really just a model. When we compare that model with the real world, the vast majority of the time it works, and that's why we use physics. But there are still a couple of cases where it doesn't. And so we need to keep researching, we need to keep learning, we need to keep changing the model of physics that we have until it fits correctly, until we're able to predict how the universe is behaving and actually turn out to be right. We're right most of the time, but not all of the time. And Planet X, Planet 9, Planet Next, whatever you'd like to call it, is an artifact uh, of our poor understanding. It might exist, we don't know, we still have to find out. So I hope you enjoyed this video talking about this uh, mysterious distant planet that may or may not exist and some of the issues around this and the gaps in our knowledge. We still have gaps in our knowledge. That's why astronomy and science are so exciting. We still don't know everything. There is still more to learn. So I hope you enjoyed this video talking about all of that interesting stuff. If you did, please do like it. If you'd like to read some of this information, you can check out my website, queenbeanscontent.ie. And if you'd like to support more of these videos in the future, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. No matter what else, hopefully I'll see you back here next time.